Good morning. I am Krishnamurthy, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, PG, KSR Rangasamy College of Arts and Science, Tirchangodu. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the basic concepts of data structure. So before discuss about the data structure, I want to define what is meant by data structure. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the basic concepts of data structures. So data structure is important concept in computer science. Here we are going to discuss about what is meant by data, how we are going to organize the data, how we are going to access the data. So these are the important concepts behind the data structure. In data structure, we are going to discuss about the basic concepts that is array, linked list, stack, queue, tree and graph. So these are the concepts we are going to discuss in this session. So first we are going to discuss about the array concept. So array is nothing but a single dimensional representation of elements. Here all data are similar data type. Here the elements are stored in a consecutive memory location. So this is the basic definition for arrays. So in this diagram we are going to discuss about the array, the array content of array with the 12 contents. That array index starts with 0 and ends with 11. So that contents are mi minus 45, 6, 0 like on it end with 78. So these are the concepts of basic concepts of the array. So array, the size of the array is static. That is, once we are going to fix the size of the array, we are not able to increase or decrease the size of an array. So array can be classified into two types. One is single dimensional array and another one is multi-dimensional array. In multi-dimensional array, we are going to classify into two-dimensional, three-dimensional and n-dimensional array. In two-dimensional array, here we are going to represent the array by means of two index. One is row and another one is column. For example, we are going to point out the score of 2 comma 3. Here score represents the name of the array and 2 represents the number of rows and 3 represents the number of columns. So for example, here second row and the element we are going to point out is second row and the third column. So this is the example of two dimensional array. So that is array can, two dimensional array can be stored in the memory with two major representation. One is row major order and another one is column major order. For example, this is a two dimensional array with two row and two columns. In two dimensional array, first we are going to store the first row that is A, B, C, D and next we are going to store the second row that is E, F, G, H. So in this way we are going to organize the elements of the array in the memory. And in the column, another representation is column major order. In column major order, first we are going to store the first column that is AE. Next we are going to store the BF. And next we are going to store the CG. And next final we are going to store the DH. In this way we are going to store the elements of the array in the column major order. So this is the representation of two dimensional array as we are going to discuss in the previous slide. So this is the example of the two dimensional array. Here we are having three rows and four columns. Here the logical representation of the two dimensional array. So here we are going to store the first row that is 4, 8, 14, 5. Next to second row 55, 1, 1, 9. And finally we are going to store 4, 0, 77 and 2. So we are, how we are going to access the elements of the array by means of subscript. So here we are going to represent the name of the array ARR with the size 3 and uh, sorry the index 3 with the element 1. For after that we are going to access the content of the array by means of array name with the index so that is a of 3 into integer variable ex. So that is a of 3 we are going to store the element 1 that one can be replaced with the integer variable ex. Next concept is linked list. Here up to that we are going to discuss about the basic concepts of array. Next we are going to discuss the linked list. In array we are having some drawback that is array are in static nature. In linked list it is a dynamic representation of elements in the dynamic representation of data we are going to organize. So linked list is here. Here we are going to store the data into in the representation of node which contains data under link. Here link point the next data. So in this way we are going to organize the data. 
So based on their requirement, either we are going to increase or decrease the size of the data structure in linked list. When we are going to need, we are going to increase the size. When there is no need, we are going to decrease the size of the data structure by mean in the linked list representation. So next, what are the basic operations performed on the linked list is insert a new node, delete a new node. We are going to find whether a particular data is available by means of find and various variations on linked list are circle linked list and double linked list. First linked list. So linked list here we are having a node structure data and the pointer. Here data which stores the actual data and the pointer shows the address of the next node. So this is a simple example of the linked list. Here we are having a head node. Head node contains only pointer which points the first node. Here we are having three data stored in the linked list represent a single linked list representation. First node stores A, second node stores B and the final node stores with the C. So that is first node points the address points the B with B next B point C and last node contains the null link. So this is the example of the linked list. So in this in this uh, slide we are going to discuss about the how we are going to create the linked list dynamically. So first A is the header node which contains null. Next we are going to get a new node so with the, which contains two parts. One is data part and another one is link part. That link part contains the null. So here we are going to store the data item in the first node 123. So now new uh, head node points the this node. Next we are going to get the second new node. Here we are going to insert new item. Here we are having two parts, data part and uh, link part. Link part contains null. Now data part have the data 234. So now the first node points the second node. In this way we are going to add any number of nodes. Here we are going to have third node. Here also the, the node structure has two parts. Here we are going to store the data item 345. So that is 234 points the this node. Next we are going to add the data 456 to this node. Next this 345 node points the new node. So in this way we are going to insert the data items in the single link list. That this is the node structure of the single link list. It has two as, as we are going to discuss data under link part. So it is the C representation of the linked list. Here we are having we are using the structure concept to represent the node. So first it has integer, integer data type which stores the data and next we are going to point it to link. Next a W link list. In single link list we are going to move the single direction from head node to last node. So this sum it has some drawback. So we are coming to W link list. In W link list we are going to move either direction either forward to backward or backward to forward. So here head node, head node points the node A like node B points the node B and node C points the, the node is the end node which has the link field null. So head node points the first node. Here this is the C representation of the double link list. Here we are having the uh, next points next pointer points the next node, previous pointer points the previous node, object contains the actual data element. So this is the empty double link list. So there is no node that is head points the tail, tail points the head. So this is the empty representation of the double link list. So now next is circular link list. In circular link list, so main concept behind the circular link list, last node points the first node, first node points the last node. So remaining concepts are same. That is node A points B, B points C, C points the D, that is the Next of the last node points the first node, previous of the first node points the last node. So this is the concept of the circular link list. So next concept is stack. So stack is the linear data structure. Main concept behind the stack data structure is LIFO that is last in first node. Which element puts last that will be taken first. So this is the basic concept of the stack data structure. So that is the current item is pointed by the top pointer. So that is the all deletion and dele insertion operation done at only one end called top. So here this is the major concept of the stack. We are going to use the stack concept in many applications of the computer science.
So this is the implement how we are going to add a element in the stack by means of the pictorial representation. First part, top points the null. First we are going to add a new node, new data that is six. Now top points the node six. So next operation is push one. So that is it is push top on the top node on the node six. So now the node new node gets the data item one. Now the node one points the node six. Next now the top points the lastly inserted item one. So next we are going to push a new item seven. This is the command that new node has the data item 7 so now 7 points the previous top item 1 now top, top points the newly inserted item 7 so in this way we are going to add new elements next we are going to do the pop operation insertion operation is called push deletion operation is called pop so here pop operation is done also at the top element so now we are going to perform the pop operation. Now top points the 7. So previous top element is 8. Now the top element is 7. So in this way we are going to perform the pop operation. So already we discussed the so stack can be used in the several application. One of the application is function calls. So now here we are having a function A. This function calls the function B. So now function b calls the function c okay now after completing the function c it can it returns to the function a so we are going to store the address of this address into the stack so that is address of x into the stack next function b calls function c after com completing the function c it returns to the address y so now the address y is pushed on to the top of the stack so in this way we are going to implement the function call using the stack concept. Next concept is queue. Queue is another data structure, linear data structure. We are going to perform the two operation that is NQ and DQ. Insertion is called NQ, deletion is called DQ. So here the concept is first in, first out. Which element inserted first, that element is deleted first. So this is the basic concept of the queue data structure. So this is the implementation of the Q here insertion take place at the rear and the deletion class take place at the front. So first we are going to insert a new element 67 at the end of the queue. Next 80 after 67 we are going to insert 80, 87. Next after 87 we are going to insert 29, 15 likewise. Last element is 20. The queue is now full. Now we are going to delete. Now we are going to delete the first element that is at the front end. Next, 80. Likewise, we are going to remove the elements of the queue. So now, what is what are the difference of the these data structures? Stack queue and array. <coughs> so in array, we are going to add and remove the element at any position. But in stack and queue, we are going to perform at the specific position in stack we are going to perform the insertion and deletion at top position but in queue we are going to insert element at rear and uh, delete element at the front so next concept is tree data structure tree data structure is a non-linear data structure so what is the difference between linear and non-linear data structure is linear data structure all the elements are stored in a continuous manner non-linear data structure there is no continuity between uh, data elements so that is there are different kinds of tree main concept main type of tree is binary tree and binary search tree in binary tree maximum number of children is two in binary search tree that is the elements the value of the left sub tree must be less than the right sub tree so these are the basic te terminologies so that is the node with no parent is called a root the node with no child is called a leaf node so that is non leaf node are called a interior node height of the tree is nothing but number of nodes from the root node to leaf node so these are the example of the binary search tree. as you discussed all the elements of left subtree must be less than the right subtree so these first two trees are binary search trees but the, that said that is the not a binary search tree that is so that is the 30 is less than 45 so in this way it is violate the rules of the binary search tree so in this way we are going to represent the tree concept here data stores the actual value 
traversing a tree. Tra traversing means visiting all the nodes of the tree exactly once. There are three ways we are going to traverse in order, pre order, post order. Pre order means first we are going to visit the root node and then left sub tree and the right sub tree. Post order means that is first we are going to visit the left side and the right sub tree. Finally, we are going to visit the root node. And in order means that is first we are going to visit the left sub tree and the root node. Finally, we are going to visit the right sub tree. Final data structure is graph. So graph contains nothing but uh, two sets, two elements. One is vertices and uh, edges. So that is what uh, here we are going to use the road and uh, railway track and the arc. These are the applications of graph. So in this graph we are having five vertices A, B, C, D. E. So these are the five vertices. Here edges mean nothing but A to B, A to C, C, C to D, and C to E. These are the edges of the graph. We are going to represent in two sets. Vertex contains A, B, C, D, E. Edges has ordered pair or unordered pair. In, in case of undirected graph, it is an unordered pair. So that is in a directed graph, we are going to use the ordered pair. So edges, the edges contains the list of edges. So these are the applications that is the design of electronic circuit and the simulation of networks. These are the applications of graphs. So terminology as we discussed adjacent, adjacent means so the vertex V1 and V2 are adjacent means so there is a edge between the vertex 1 to vertex 2. In directed graph vertex V0 and V1 are adjacent means there is a edge from V0 to v1 then only it is called adjacent of v1 is v0 is adjacent to v1 so degree of the vertex is that is the number of edges leaving from this vertex is called a degree so in directed graph so in we are going to classify the degree into two types one is in degree and another one is out degree so that is in degree means number of edges coming to this vertex is called in degree so number of edges leaving from this vertex is called out degree so this is the example for in degree and out degree for example take this graph for example so node vertex 0 so that is in degree is 1 and out degree is 1 so because there is one leaving edge and one incoming edge for vertex 1 in degree is 1 out degree is because two edges are leaving from the vertex 1. Finally, we are having vertex 2. Here in degrees 1, there is no outer edge. So that is out degree is 0. So next we are going to discuss about the how we are going to represent the graph in the memory. There are two ways we are going to represent the graph in the memory. One is adjacency matrix and another one is adjacency list. So here we are going to represent the graph in the matrix format. That is here we are having n rows and n columns the n is equal to the number of vertices. so for example take graph 2 here we are having three vertex so we are having three rows and three columns if there is an edge from one one vertex to another vertex we are we are having the entry one otherwise we are having the entry zero for example there is for example first row first column there is no edge from one to one so we are having the entry zero next we are having 0 to 1 so there is a edge from 0 to 1 so we are having the entry 1 so in this way we are going to represent the directed graph in the adjacency matrix so next one is adjacency list linked list is used to represent the graph so for example we are having the graph 2 so here we are having the three vertex so we are having three list so we are having three linked list for example so no zero vertex 0 there is a adjacent edge to vertex 1 so we are having the new node with the entry 1 the next there is no node so in link field of this node is null likewise we are having for no vertex 1 there is a edge from to node 0 as well as node 2 so we are having two entries for vertex 1 so there is two edges so we are having the representation 0 and 2 there is no adjacent node to vertex 2 so this end list is empty so this in this way we are going to represent the graph in the adjacency list thank you